Many people believe predicting the future is a hazy, inexact process. For them, an accurate prediction depends on blind luck or good fortune. However, relying on luck to predict the weather for your flight is not wise. As a pilot, you must rely on good forecasts. Fortunately, a number of methods with varying accuracies have been developed to help you anticipate weather conditions. Have you left your house in the morning for work, noticed the nice weather, and determined it would still be nice later in the day? If so, you have made a persistence forecast. By assuming the existing weather conditions won't change during the day, you predict the weather in the afternoon will be as nice as it was in the morning. However, this method of forecasting is not reliable over long periods of time, usually not more than one or two hours. Trend forecasting predicts that, without interruption, a weather event, like a storm cell, will continue moving in the same direction and at the same speed it's currently moving. In this case, the storm will reach the airport in less than two hours if atmospheric conditions don't act to change its course and speed. Similar to persistence forecasts, Trend forecasting is generally accurate for only a few hours. At times, predictions are based on the average historical weather for an area. Known as climatological forecasts, they are reliable in areas and times which enjoy little change in day-to-day -day conditions. For instance, San Francisco has a generally moderate climate and may receive less than one rainy day per month during the summer. The analog forecast also uses historical data for predictions. This method is useful in predicting the temperature for a given day. By combining past data for a certain day with prevailing weather conditions, a meteorologist can accurately predict the expected high or low temperature. One of the better ways to predict the weather is the meteorological forecast. A good meteorologist can reliably forecast out to 12 hours by using his knowledge of atmospheric processes. This type of forecast can be a valuable tool for pilots. Powerful computers and mathematical equations have increased forecast accuracy by modeling weather trends. The result is a numerical weather prediction. The computer runs one forecast model on top of another to determine their effects over time. Doing so produces a relatively accurate picture of future weather events. Regardless of the forecast you receive, you can be sure the information contained was collected and compiled with the help of numerous agencies. With thousands of land and sea-based reporting stations, large volumes of weather data can be collected and analyzed. Through the coordinated action of several agencies, including the World Meteorological Organization, National Weather Service, and numerous private organizations, weather information is disseminated for your use. Although the Weather Collection and Dissemination Network is extensive and thorough, it's not perfect. While forecasting accuracy continues to improve, long-term forecasts and short-term predictions of localized weather phenomena are still difficult to develop with reliability. Even though forecasters aren't always precise, the experience and skill they can provide you is superior to other methods of predicting the future. After all, when it comes to aviation weather, having the edge provided by a good forecast is better than taking your chances. Weather check is not only an important part of your pre-flight planning, but is required for any flight not in the vicinity of an airport. A wide variety of weather reports and forecasts are available for pilots to use. Today, there are several ways you can access these reports and forecasts, including a personal visit to any flight service station, computer-based weather briefings, and weather reports by fax. Since the systems allow direct access to printed weather information, learning to decode actual reports and forecasts is just as important as ever. During this program, you'll become familiar with aviation routine weather reports, pilot weather reports, radar reports, terminal aerodrome forecasts or TAF, area forecasts, airmets, SIGMETs, 
convective sigmets, winds and temperatures aloft forecasts, and finally, notices to airmen or notams. Let's begin our discussion with a look at METAR, or Aviation Routine Weather Reports, which contain the latest reported hourly weather observations for various locations. The information for each reporting station is printed in a coded format beginning with the report type. Here, the word METAR represents a routine report. If SPECI is in this location, it indicates a special non-routine METAR weather report, which means the report was issued at other than the regular time, and there has been a significant change in the weather since the last report. The next element contains the station identifier. Notice the METAR code uses the ICAO, International Civil Aviation Organization, four-letter station identifier. The stations within the contiguous 48 states are prefixed with a K. Here, KDEN is the identifier for Denver. Following the station identifier are the date and time in Zulu of the weather observation. When a report is generated by an automated weather observation station that has no human intervention, the word auto will follow the date time group. If a correction is made to a report, the abbreviation COR is substituted for the word auto. The remainder of the printout is dedicated to weather, beginning with wind. Surface wind readings make up this section. The wind direction is given first, followed by the wind speed in knots. Here, the wind is blowing from 330 degrees at 18 knots. Variations of wind speed are shown as gusts and are indicated with a G. In this example, the wind is from 290 degrees at 30 knots, gusting to 45 knots. If the wind direction is variable and the velocity is 6 knots or less, it is noted by the prefix VRB. Here, the wind is variable at 4 knots. When the wind direction varies by 60 degrees or more, a variable group consisting of the extremes in wind direction, separated by a V, will follow the prevailing wind group. In this example, the wind direction has varied from 290 to 360 degrees. A calm wind condition is indicated by five zeros followed by KT. The next element of the METAR report gives the visibility in statute miles. At Denver, the visibility is one half statute mile. When runway visual range is reported, it is preceded by an R. The next two digits are the runway number followed by the visual range measured in feet. Here, the RVR for runway 31 is 2,600 feet. The next section of the METAR report is the present weather at the time of the observation. The type of precipitation or the obscuring phenomena is shown in code and may be preceded by an intensity symbol, a proximity code, and a descriptor code. Intensity levels are shown as either a plus or minus symbol and only apply to the first type of precipitation reported. This example indicates that light rain is falling. The plus symbol denotes heavy rain and no symbol indicates moderate intensity. When the reported meteorological conditions are between 5 and 10 statute miles of the usual point of observation, the code VC is used indicating the reported weather is in the vicinity of the airport. Two-letter descriptors are used to provide even more information about precipitation and obscuring phenomena. Here, FG indicates that fog is the predominant obscuring phenomena. Other common descriptors are TS for thunderstorms, SH for showers, FZ for freezing, DR for low drifting, MI for shallow, and BC for patches. The common letters used to indicate precipitation and obstructions to visibility include RA for rain, DZ for drizzle, GR for hail, FU for smoke, and HZ for haze. Additional codes are listed in your manual. The next block is used to report sky conditions. The amount of coverage is reported in eighths of sky cover 
and is represented by different contractions. If the sky is clear, meaning there are no clouds visible to the observer, the report will contain the letters SKC. At automated stations, the abbreviation CLR is used to indicate no clouds below 12,000 feet are detected. The letters FEW in the METAR report mean up to two-eighths of the sky is covered by clouds. A scattered layer, or SCT, means that the clouds cover three-eighths through four-eighths of the sky. A heavier sky cover is referred to as broken and is indicated on the report with the letters BKN. In this case, the clouds are covering five-eighths through seven-eighths of the sky. When OVC appears, the sky is reported as overcast, which means clouds completely cover the sky. When the sky is reported as broken or overcast, a ceiling is said to exist. The height of the cloud bases are reported with three digits measured in hundreds of feet above ground level. Here, the first layer is a scattered layer at 800 feet with a second overcast layer at 1,000 feet. When the sky is obscured by a surface-based layer, the vertical visibility is reported. The letters BV indicate an indefinite ceiling, and the three-digit number is the height in hundreds of feet. In this case, the vertical visibility is 400 feet. Cumulonimbus clouds or towering cumulus clouds are observed. The letters CB or TCU will follow the number representing the height of the cloud base. In this example, the observer has reported a scattered layer of towering cumulus at 1,500 feet. The next segment of the report gives the temperature and dew point in degrees Celsius. When these temperatures are below zero degrees Celsius, they are preceded by an M. In this example, the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius and the dew point is minus eight degrees Celsius. Altimeter settings are preceded by an A and reported in a four-digit format in inches of mercury. Here, Denver's altimeter is reported as 29.91 inches of mercury. The last section of a METAR contains remarks and is identified by the contraction RMK. This section includes operationally significant weather as well as the beginning and ending times of the specified weather phenomena. In this example, rain began at 35 minutes past the hour. At 55 minutes past the hour, the rain ended. Pilot weather reports, or PIREPs, also provide valuable information about current weather conditions and should be reviewed in a thorough weather briefing. No other observations are more timely than the ones made by a pilot. In fact, PIREPs provide the only means of directly observing cloud tops, icing, and turbulence. A PIREP is usually received and transmitted in a prescribed format. The letters UA identify the report as a routine PIREP and UUA identifies an urgent PIREP. Two-letter codes differentiate each block within the report. For example, OV describes the location of the aircraft, TM tells you the time when the report was made, FL identifies the flight level, and TP tells you the type of aircraft flown. These first five blocks must be included in all PIREPs. The PIREP must contain at least one of several weather elements, also identified by two-letter codes. These include SK for sky cover, WX for flight visibility and weather, TA for temperature, WV for wind, TB for turbulence, IC for icing, and RM for any remarks that might be included within a report. In printed form, PIREPs appear in this format. This sample PIREP from near Centennial Airport was issued as urgent. The aircraft was on the Denver 161 radial at 14 miles. The time of the report was 1939 Zulu, and the pilot was flying at 11,500 feet in a Mooney Mark 20. The pilot reported moderate to severe turbulence between 11.5 and 14,000 feet while en route from Farmington, New Mexico to Centennial Airport. Radar reports are another important source of weather information since they identify areas of precipitation at the time of the report. Each report can be divided into as many as 10 blocks of information. 
The first segment contains the location identifier and the time of the radar observation. This report is from Evansville and was taken at 1926 Zulu. The observation shows an area of echoes with three-tenths coverage consisting of light rain showers, which are decreasing in intensity. The next segment defines the boundaries of the area of precipitation using the azimuth and range from the reporting site. In this example, the points defining the area of echoes are 338 degrees at 90 nautical miles from Evansville, 111 degrees at 110 nautical miles, and 262 degrees at 125 nautical miles. The report continues by indicating that the area of precipitation is moving from 260 degrees at 30 knots. Finally, it shows that the maximum tops of the clouds are at 12,000 feet, located at 324 degrees at 39 miles. The predicted surface weather within a five statute mile radius from the center of an airport's runway complex is called a terminal aerodrome forecast or TAF. Each forecast is issued four times a day and is valid for a 24-hour period. The codes used in a TAF are similar to those used in a METAR. In this example of a terminal aerodrome forecast, you can find forecast wind, visibility if six statute miles or less, weather, and sky conditions. Let's take a look at a typical TAF. This forecast is for KDEN, Denver, Colorado. Following the four-letter station identifier is the date and time of issuance. The first two digits are the date, immediately followed by the time in Zulu. This forecast was issued on the 9th of the month at 1745 Zulu. The next group indicates the valid period. In this case, the forecast is valid on the 9th of the month from 1800 Zulu through 1800 Zulu on the following day. The forecast is calling for winds from 220 degrees true at 20 knots. Visibility is expected to be two and one half miles with light rain showers. The ceiling is forecast to be 2,000 feet broken. When the wind direction fluctuates or the wind speed is three knots or less, it is encoded as VRB. Cumulonimbus CB is the only cloud type included in a terminal aerodrome forecast. When the weather is expected to change during the forecast period, the TAF will indicate the change at the end of the report. For example, at Denver, from 0100 Zulu, the sky conditions are forecast to be clear through the remainder of the forecast. When a possibility exists for a change in the wind, visibility, weather, or sky conditions, and those forecast changes are expected to last less than an hour, they are preceded by the term TEMPO, or tempo. This report predicts that between 0400 Zulu and 0800 Zulu, visibility will drop to three statute miles associated with thunderstorms and rain showers. An overcast layer of cumulonimbus clouds with bases at 3,000 feet is also expected. BECMG, or becoming, is used when a gradual change in conditions is expected and should not last more than two hours. The forecast time of the weather is listed by a four-digit number representing the beginning and ending hours of the change and follows the becoming indicator. When there is a 30 to 49 percent chance for the occurrence of thunderstorms or precipitation, you will see a probability group. Thunderstorms or precipitation expected to be present more than 50 percent of the time will be included in the prevailing weather or a tempo. Here, there is a 40% chance of three statute miles visibility along with thunderstorm and rain showers between 0000 and 0400 Zulu. This report also predicts that a broken layer of cumulonimbus clouds with bases at 3,000 feet is expected during this four-hour time period. Now let's look at the area forecast, or FA, which also provides valuable weather information. Each forecast predicts the general weather conditions over an area the size of several states. You can use it to help determine en route weather as well as probable weather conditions at airports without terminal aerodrome forecasts. An area forecast is divided into four basic sections. Communications and product header, precautionary statement, 
synopsis, and VFR clouds and weather. The communications and products header identifies the office issuing the forecast, the date and time of issuance, the valid times for forecast weather, and the states covered by the forecast. The precautionary statements, a standard note on each area forecast, indicate that thunderstorms imply possible severe or greater turbulence, severe icing, low-level wind shear, and IFR conditions. The statement in this example, see AirMet Sierra for IFR conditions and mountain obscurations, alerts pilots that IFR conditions and or mountain obscurations may be occurring or forecasted to occur in a portion of the forecast area. Always check the latest AirMet for your area of flight. In addition, all heights not given in terms of mean sea level are noted in the forecast by the abbreviations AGL for above ground level or CIG for ceiling. This section of the area forecast is the synopsis, which contains a brief summary of the location and movement of fronts, pressure systems, and circulation patterns for an 18-hour period. This synopsis states that there is an upper-level trough in north-central Montana through southern Idaho that will move east into the plains by 00 Zulu with an upper-level ridge building over Washington, Oregon, and northern California. There is also a surface high pressure over eastern Washington and northern Idaho that will build southeastward into southwest Wyoming behind the cold front. The VFR clouds and weather portion of this section is broken down by states or areas and describes the cloud conditions, weather, and or visibility that are marginal VFR or better. In this example, Arizona is forecast to have scattered to occasionally broken clouds in the northern half of the state. The southern and far eastern portions of the state are expected to have scattered clouds with bases at 15,000 feet AGL and a chance of isolated light rain showers after 1500 Zulu. Included in the VFR clouds and weather portion is a 12-hour forecast and 6-hour categorical outlook for each state. The outlook for this area is VFR. When weather conditions warrant, the National Weather Service will issue in-flight advisories in the form of airmets, SIGMETs, and convective SIGMETs. Although classified as in-flight advisories, these reports are also included in computer printouts. These advisories notify pilots of the possibility of hazardous flying conditions, which may not have been forecast at the time of the initial briefing. An airmet describes areas of turbulence, icing, sustained surface winds greater than 30 knots, ceilings below 1,000 feet and or surface visibility below three statute miles, and mountain obscuration of sufficient intensity or extent. There are three AirMet designators. Sierra always represents areas of IFR, Tango always represents areas of turbulence, and Zulu always represents areas of icing. Here, AirMet Sierra is valid for Wyoming and Colorado and indicates areas of mountain obscuration and IFR conditions. SIGMETs describe non-convective weather conditions of greater intensity than those in AirMets. SIGMETs are issued for severe or extreme turbulence or clear air turbulence, severe icing, dust or sandstorms that lower surface or in-flight visibilities to below three miles, or volcanic ash. Anytime weather conditions meet or exceed these criteria or are expected to occur within two hours, a SIGMET will be issued. Convective SIGMETs report areas of severe thunderstorms tornadoes, heavy precipitation, hail of three-quarter of an inch or greater, wind gusts to 50 knots or more, embedded thunderstorms, and lines of thunderstorms. However, since conditions of severe or greater turbulence, severe icing, and convective low-level wind shear are normally associated with thunderstorms, these conditions are assumed to exist and are not specified in the report. Convective SIGMET bulletins are issued at 55 minutes past the hour and are valid for two hours. Appended to each convective SIGMET is an outlook valid for two to six hours after the issuance time. 
This outlook discusses further convective development with emphasis on lines or clusters of thunderstorms and severe or embedded thunderstorms. Another element of your weather briefing is the winds and temperatures aloft forecast. This forecast helps you calculate en route speed and performance figures for your aircraft. Winds and temperatures aloft forecasts are derived from information gathered by weather balloons released at 12 hour intervals. The forecast gives the wind direction in degrees from true north, wind speed in knots, and the temperature in degrees Celsius for selected altitudes. Forecasts for specific locations are indicated by station identifiers. Each identifier is followed by code groups which show the wind direction, wind speed, and temperature at specified forecast levels. The first two digits represent wind direction in tens of degrees, with the next two digits representing the wind speed. Where appropriate, the remaining digits record the forecast temperature. In this example, the coded group forecasts a wind from 200 degrees at six knots. The temperature at this altitude is forecast to be 13 degrees Celsius. Due to terrain influence, wind forecast information is omitted from any level that is within 1,500 feet of the ground. Likewise, the temperature is omitted from the 3,000 foot level and any other level which is within 2,500 feet of the surface. Since temperatures are always negative above 24,000 feet, the minus sign is omitted above this level. Notices to airmen, or NOTAMs, are usually included with printed weather reports. NOTAMs alert you to recent changes in the airspace system that could affect the safety of your flight. Here, a temporary flight restriction is in effect until further notice. This restriction is due to dynamite blasting, and only authorized flights may be conducted within 500 feet over the blasting area. In this program, you have seen a brief overview of some of the major printed reports and forecasts that are available to you in preparing for any flight you take. When interpreted correctly, these reports and forecasts help you understand the weather you will encounter in flight. In addition to the printed reports and forecasts disseminated by the National Weather Service, there are also various graphic weather products available for your use. Some of the more common graphic products are the surface analysis, weather depiction, radar summary, and low-level significant weather prognostic charts. These charts are designed to give you the general weather picture over a large geographic region in a glance. The surface analysis chart is a good source for this type of information. Here, surface pressure, frontal areas, and surface weather information have been combined into a single graphic display. Low and high pressure centers are readily identifiable by large L's and H's. Isobars, connecting points of equal pressure, are plotted around these centers. They are normally drawn at four millibar intervals and are labeled with the last two digits of the barometric pressure. Here the isobar labeled 96 represents 996 millibars. Frontal boundaries are noted by solid lines. The direction and type of front can be determined by the symbols attached to the line. The front shown here has pointed barbs on one side which identify it as a cold front. Since the barbs are on the east side of the line, the front is moving in an easterly direction. Weather briefers may color cold fronts blue to help you identify them. Half circles identify this as a warm front. Again, the direction of movement is shown by the placement of the symbols on the frontal line. In this case, it is moving to the north. For ease of identification, warm fronts may be colored red. A combination of half circles and barbs on opposite sides of the lines is used for a stationary front. The line is usually colored with alternating red and blue segments. A line depicting an occluded front has both symbols on the same side and is usually colored purple. 
In addition to pressure and frontal information, the surface analysis chart provides weather observations for a large number of reporting stations located throughout the country. For each location, a station model provides the reported weather conditions at the time the chart was produced. Let's take a closer look at each element of the model. The identifier is printed below and to the left of the symbol. LAF represents Lafayette, Indiana. The circle itself is shaded according to the amount of cloud cover that is present. Here, three-fourths of the circle is filled, indicating a broken cloud layer. A wind pointer indicates the true direction from which the wind is blowing. You can read the speed using the barbs at the end of the wind pointer. Each long barb represents 10 knots, while each short barb is 5 knots. In this example, the wind is out of the southeast at 15 knots. A pennant represents 50 knots of wind, while a circle around the station indicates a calm wind. When clouds are present, the level and type will be depicted in the station model. Low clouds are shown below the station model, with middle and high clouds printed above the symbol. You can find the decoding information for these symbols in various FAA publications and at flight service stations. To the left of the station circle is the temperature and dew point. If there is precipitation or weather obscuring the visibility, the appropriate symbol will be printed between the temperature and dew point figures. The symbol here represents intermittent snow. To the lower right of the station, the precipitation over the last six hours is recorded in hundreds of inches. The atmospheric pressure measured in tenths of millibars is shown in the top right corner. You must add the decimal and prefix the number with a 9 or 10, whichever brings the value closer to 1,000. The pressure at Lafayette is 1,018.7 millibars. Below this reading is the amount and tendency of any pressure change over the past three hours. At this station, the pressure has decreased 0.7 millibars. To ensure that you have the latest information, you should note the time of the observation. It is shown in a date time box in the lower left portion of the chart. Then, by comparing the current surface analysis chart with earlier ones, you can get an indication of how the weather systems are progressing. Another graphic display of the weather is the weather depiction chart, which can be very useful in determining general weather conditions and the locations of low clouds and visibility. This chart, like the surface analysis chart, uses a station model to present the reported weather at various locations. However, this model has been simplified, making it easier to read. Cloud coverage is shown in the same manner, but the pressure information, wind, temperature, cloud types, and station identifier are not plotted. Below the station circle is the height of the ceiling or lowest cloud layer in hundreds of feet. This station model is showing overcast skies at 10,000 feet AGL. If the visibility is five statute miles or less, it is printed to the left. Weather or obstructions to visibility may also be shown. The visibility at this station is three miles in fog. Although pressure and wind information is not provided on these charts, areas of significant weather are outlined to help with route planning. Shaded areas indicate IFR conditions and contain ceilings less than 1,000 feet and or visibilities less than three miles. Areas of marginal VFR weather with ceilings between one and 3,000 feet and or visibilities between three and five miles are shown in solid lines with no shading. Finally, weather depiction charts also give the position of fronts. This frontal information, when added to the areas of IFR and marginal VFR weather, will give you a very good picture of the general weather affecting your route. The radar summary chart is another graphic display that is frequently used by pilots and briefers. It is used to identify large areas of precipitation and hazardous weather that could affect your flight. Radar summary charts are developed by using reflected radar energy 
or echoes of the precipitation areas. The more severe the precipitation, the stronger the echo. Each radar observation station is then combined into one hourly map. The strength of the echo returns is shown by solid lines surrounding shaded areas. The outermost line indicates precipitation that is light to moderate. A second line within the echo depicts heavy to very heavy precipitation, while a third line shows where intense to extreme precipitation exists. A solid single line shows a line of echoes with the boxed SLD indicating that the echo coverage is 8 tenths or greater along the line. The direction of movement of an individual cell is indicated by an arrow. The speed, 45 knots, is shown at the point of the arrow. The letters NE indicate areas with no echoes, while the letters TRW stand for thunderstorms and rain showers. Echo tops are encoded in two or three digits. You will need to add two zeros to determine the actual altitude. For example, the top of this cell is at 34,000 feet, and the top of this one is 19,000 feet. Because it is assumed that all precipitation displayed on the chart reaches the surface, the chart does not include a symbol to show the base of the echoes. An area which is under a severe weather watch will be marked with a dashed box and an alphanumeric identifier. In this case, WS0006 identifies this as a severe thunderstorm watch area. When an area is marked with a WT, it is identified as a tornado watch area. When using a radar summary chart, remember that radar only detects areas of liquid or solid precipitation. It will not, for instance, show areas of fog, and the actual cloud tops may be higher or lower than the figures shown on the chart. The charts we have seen so far in this program have all depicted observed weather conditions. Other charts, including the low-level significant weather prognostic, or PROG chart, offer a forecast of future weather. PROG charts are divided into four panels. The top two contain 12 and 24-hour forecasts of IFR and marginal VFR conditions, turbulence, and freezing levels. These two panels forecast the weather from the surface through approximately 24,000 feet. The bottom two panels forecast the location of pressure and frontal systems, as well as the areas and types of precipitation on the surface itself. Areas of IFR conditions, where ceilings are expected to be less than 1,000 feet and or visibilities less than 3 miles, are enclosed by solid lines. Scalloped lines enclose marginal VFR areas where ceilings are expected to be 1,000 to 3,000 feet and or visibilities are forecast to be between 3 and 5 statute miles. Areas which are forecast to have moderate or greater turbulence are enclosed by dash lines and contain symbols indicating the intensity and altitude of the turbulence. In this case, moderate turbulence can be expected from the surface to 3,000 feet over this area of the United States. The position of the freezing level at specified altitudes is also shown on the chart. A zigzag line is used to identify the freezing level at the surface. Freezing levels above mean sea level are indicated by dashed lines drawn at 4,000 foot intervals. On the lower panels, fronts and pressure centers are presented in the same manner as they are on surface analysis charts. In this example, this high has a barometric pressure of 1,022 millibars. Solid lines are used to denote areas of precipitation. Symbols are inserted to denote the type of activity expected. For example, two dots indicate rain, while two star symbols represent snow. A mixture of precipitation is indicated by showing two pertinent symbols separated by a slash. These symbols represent rain showers and thunderstorms. A bold dash line is used to separate precipitation with contrasting characteristics within an outlined area. 
For example, this dashed line separates an area of snow from an area of rain. Continuous precipitation is a dominant and widespread event and therefore is shaded. Intermittent precipitation is a periodic and patchy event and remains unshaded. Shading is also used to denote the amount of precipitation projected in a specified region. Areas with more than half coverage are shaded and half or less coverage unshaded. The charts that have been presented in this program are but a few of the graphic weather products that are available for your use. As we have seen, charts of these types are very useful for obtaining a brief, general overlook of the existing and forecast weather along your intended route of flight and the surrounding areas. In previous segments, you learned how to interpret printed reports and forecasts, as well as graphic weather products. But as a pilot, how does this information get into your hands? You can retrieve weather information from a wide variety of sources. Government facilities and private companies make weather reports and forecasts available by phone, television, fax, radio, and the internet. First, let's take a look at the sources of pre-flight weather information available to you. The most common source of pre-flight weather information is the Flight Service Station, or FSS. Flight Service Stations are FAA-operated facilities spanning the contiguous United States, as well as Alaska and Hawaii. You may encounter the term Automated Flight Service Station, or AFSS. This term is sometimes used to differentiate the current FSSs that employ advanced technology from the former non-automated FSSs. An FSS typically offers a number of services, including pre-flight weather briefings, IFR and VFR flight plan processing, assistance for aircraft that are lost or in distress, and aid for search and rescue operations. Some flight service stations also have the ability to provide in-flight weather information in the form of en route flight advisory service, or EFIS. If you happen to live in a city where an FSS is located, you can visit the station and receive pre-flight weather services in person if the briefers are able to handle your request at that time. Due to the limited number of stations in the U.S., however, a telephone briefing is a much more common means of receiving weather information. You can reach a flight service station on the ground by simply dialing a toll-free number anywhere in the U.S. When you dial 1-800-WXBRIEF, you will be connected with the FSS nearest your location. The FSS phone system allows you to access a pre-flight weather briefer, along with other services such as FastFile, a flight plan filing tool. When you speak with a pre-flight briefer, you can request one of three types of weather briefings, an Outlook briefing, a Standard briefing, and an abbreviated briefing. Before you can receive a briefing, however, you must provide some background information regarding your flight. This allows the briefer to tailor the weather information to your specific needs. An Outlook briefing is used when your departure is six or more hours away. This type of briefing is very useful for getting an overall picture of the general weather trends that may affect your flight. As your departure time nears, a standard briefing is necessary to obtain the most complete and in-depth weather data. A standard briefing is comprised of 12 separate and sometimes lengthy elements, so be prepared to write when you call. The briefer normally provides you with the following information. Reported and forecast adverse weather conditions. Information regarding whether or not VFR is recommended based on the current and forecast weather an overall synopsis of weather systems, the current weather conditions, the en route weather forecast for your route of flight, the forecast for your destination airport, the winds and temperatures aloft forecast, NOTAMs, any air traffic control delays if applicable, a request for pilot reports, 
the availability of EFIS or FlightWatch, weather updates, and any other information you request, such as military activity along your flight route. Just prior to your departure, you may elect to check the weather one more time. An abbreviated briefing allows you to request one or two specific items and be advised of any changes in the weather since your last briefing. To expedite this briefing, be sure to include as much background information as possible, including the time and source of your last briefing. If you do not need to speak with a weather briefer, but you would like current weather information to aid in your pre-flight planning, some FSSs offer the Telephone Information Briefing Service System, or TIBS. You can access the TIBS recordings using the FSS 1-800 number. Typically, these recordings include route and or area briefings for specific locations in the FSS region. This recording prepared at 1408 Zulu. Briefing summary of current weather in eastern Colorado. Valid until 1500 Zulu. Summarized current conditions. A few clouds at 900,000 to 11,000 and high scattered cirrus. Visibility is unrestricted. Winds are generally northwesterly to northeasterly. The TIBS system is recommended for preliminary briefings only and should not replace a standard weather briefing. If you have any questions about the recorded information, you can remain on the line to access a weather briefer. Be sure to provide the briefer with any background information in order to expedite the process. Another system you can use to receive complete weather briefings is the Direct User Access Terminal Service, or DUATS. DUATS is a free service that can be accessed on the internet or with a modem and a 1-800 number. You can obtain all the items of a standard weather briefing through DUATS, as well as selected reports for specific locations. You can also file both VFR and IFR flight plans. DUATS, however, does not provide any details on military activities. You'll need to contact a flight service station for this information. You are required to have a current medical certificate to access the DUATS system. Further information regarding the DUAT service can be found in the Aeronautical Information Manual. In addition to DUATs, a number of organizations offer weather information by phone or on the Internet. While many of these sites and services are free, some require membership or specific user fees. Just one of many Internet sites providing weather information is the National Weather Service website, which is operated by NOAA, a weather service branch of the U.S. government. While websites are excellent sources of pre-flight weather data, the information presented may not be the most up-to-date and should not be used in place of a complete weather briefing from an FSS or the DUATS system. Jeppesen also provides several weather resources for pilots, such as JEPFAX, a worldwide weather fax service available for a small user fee. A complete listing of Jeppesen weather products, including JEPFAX, can be found at jeppesen.com or at flightneeds.com. Now that you've discovered where to obtain weather information prior to flight, let's explore how you can get updated weather information while airborne. One of the best sources of en route weather is en route flight advisory service, or EFIS, also known as FlightWatch. This service is available from selected flight service stations. The frequency for FlightWatch is 122.0. After giving the EFIS specialist the details concerning your flight and your request, the briefer relays the latest weather information. You can also access weather data by monitoring selected VOR and NDB stations. These facilities normally provide local weather information updates or weather advisories. One such source of en route advisories is the Hazardous In-Flight Weather Advisory Service, or HIWAS, which is continuously broadcast over selected VORs. Information available through this system includes airmets, sigmets, convective sigmets, summarized severe weather forecast alerts, center weather advisories, and urgent pyreps. The nav aids and frequencies used for HIWAS can be found in the airport facility directory. Nav aids with HIWAS capabilities are also noted on aeronautical charts. Miami.
Army Center area, recorded at 1845 Greenwich, convective Sigmet 17 Echo, between Key West and 50 nautical miles west of Vero Beach, line of thunderstorms 25 nautical miles wide. Other in-flight services which provide surface weather observations include the Automated Weather Observing System, or AWOS, and the Automated Surface Observing System, or ASOS. These systems record surface weather observations and automatically transmit real-time weather. Denver Centennial Airport. Automated Weather Observation 2116 Zulu. Wind 040 at 12. AWOS and ASOS broadcasts can be received up to 25 nautical miles from the station and up to a maximum altitude of 10,000 feet AGL. These stations are also accessible on the ground by phone. AWOS and ASOS facilities, frequencies, and phone numbers are listed in the airport facility directory and the JAID as well as noted on aeronautical charts. As you have seen, there are numerous weather sources available for your use, and more methods to obtain accurate weather data continue to be developed. Additional information can be found in the FAR AIM, advisory circulars, and other sources. You should always receive a pre-flight briefing before your departure. While en route, take advantage of EFIS and other en route information services to keep abreast of changes in the forecast weather. Fly safe by staying advised of current and expected weather conditions. With the wide selection of services available, obtaining the required weather data for your flight is both quick and easy.